Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and today I'm going to be comparing the new Fusion Edge to the one that it's replacing which is the Mini 24. I'm going to do a rundown of both of the machines, just how they look aesthetically, as well as what buttons and controls you have on the machine. And then I'm going to be doing some speed comparison testing. I'm not going to be doing any kind of power comparison because this one is a 60 watt and the Mini 24 I have access to is a 40 watt. So doing a power test comparison just wouldn't be fair, but a speed comparison will be an apples to apples test. There are going to be four designs that I am testing. There's going to be a small engraving test, a full bed engraving test, a small vector test, and then a full bed vector test. Doing these different sizes will hopefully show the full difference of what a small thing will do versus the full bed size and the full travel of the machine. And we'll get into that. But first, let's head over to my friend Josh's house where he has the Mini 24 that we're going to be using and give you a rundown of that machine. All right, I'm over at my friend Josh's house. Josh, say hi. So he runs Unhinged Labs, shameless plug right there. And he actually bought my old Mini 24 machine. So I'm going to be doing a comparison of the Mini 24 and the Fusion Edge. So the Mini 24 is behind me. I'm gonna walk over what that one looks like. And then we're gonna do some machining test on it that we can compare and go from there. So this one is the Mini. So the control panel is here. It's pretty basic as far as what you'll see. And then the front actually has the magnetic drawer that pulls down and all the belts and everything are underneath. The power and input and switch are over here. And then the right side is basically just this panel. It's kind of hard to see because of the being dark. Okay, and then on the back, uh, there's the airport back here the back panel, the actual fans to cool the tube, and then there's the exhaust port, uh, and then just basically the rest of the back panel. So this is where you can gain access to the tube itself to replace it and things like that. So this one, the lid is just the handle with a piece of glass. The magnets are over here for the locking system to make sure the lid is closed. It's got the head on it that looks like this, where you can put the manual focus gauge or there's also an auto focus that can connect to the back of this. And then there's the belt that lets you travel back and forth. This one does have a linear encoder strip that you do need to clean that is underneath of this shell. Then it's open on the sides as far as the rails. So you can see it a little bit here, but it's open access to all the motors all the rails, all the belts, and same on this side. And then this one actually has rulers that fold up on the front or on the sides and then the back. And then this table can come out and it has a tray underneath, or you can replace this with a, or a raster table. So again, here's the interface. So you have the go, the stop, resetting the machine, setting the home, changing the, or unlocking the X, Y, so you can actually move this around. And then you just have basic buttons for power, speed, maintenance, configuration, and then moving the table up and down, things like that. Now that you've seen the Mini 24, let's talk about the Edge. So here's the machine. If you haven't seen the video yet, I did an unboxing video that I will link in the description where you can see the full overview. But over on the left is just a logo. The exhaust is in the back, just like the Mini. You'll see that there is no pull down a magnetic door. You actually have to take this panel off with a couple of screws. I will admit, I think this was a misstep Having the magnetic door was a huge bonus to cleaning out uh, the machine and everything else. And especially with the chrome tray in the bottom, this may get annoying. But aesthetically, it looks really nice. It's got all your connections over here on the right. And then it also has your controls up here. 
One of the first things to note is on the Mini 24, you can connect via ethernet or you can connect via a printer cable. On the Edge, you can use ethernet, the printer cable, or it has built in Wi-Fi that you can connect straight to the machine. You can get a Mini to connect over Wi-Fi if you run it through a router and all that stuff but having it on board the machine and easy to connect to is a big plus for me. Uh, and it makes it so that if you don't have Wi-Fi, you can still connect through ethernet or the printer cable. So next, if I open the machine, there is a vector grid that is magnetic. There is no raster engraving bed anymore. It's just the vector one. And it actually has reinforcements to make it stronger. This one has the safeguard clean type system. So it protects all of the motors and everything on the sides from getting dirty. The head is a completely different shape and design. The autofocus is different. So this one has the nozzle. Uh, the Mini 24 had a little spring loaded thing you had to attach to the back. The rail on this one does not have a linear encoder strip that you have to worry about cleaning. So that's kind of nice. And this is all sealed up. And on the right side, you'll see it has this safeguard stuff as well. And then there's a little bit more room in this machine. So the head doesn't really move back a whole lot, but it does have more access to slide your material in, which is kind of nice. Also, there is a camera. So this is the Iris camera for positioning your artwork. Uh, this just wasn't a feature on the Mini 24. Then the biggest difference you'll probably see is the interface on the actual machine itself. So we just have the go and pause button and then a joystick that helps us navigate this menu. But this is a seven inch touch screen you will see the jobs loaded up automatically. This machine has one gigabyte of memory on board the machine, so you can save your jobs to it. So when you boot the machine up, they automatically appear. You can also delete the jobs from the machine if you need to. So if you're done with a job, you can just click on it, hit the trash can, say, yes, I wanna delete, and it removes it, which is kind of nice. The other thing here is you have access to all your settings through this gear at the top. So up here you have some system settings you can go through and change if you need to. There's also a secret menu if you hold down on the settings header. There's a secret menu you can get to that goes to calibrate cameras and all of this other stuff. It's really not secret, it's just not super obvious that you need to do that. But if you ever need to calibrate your camera or your display, you go into this menu. Also on here, this button here is the reset button. So you click that, it goes back to your home position. This button here is the Z axis movement. So you can move the table up or down. Then you have the red dot pointer here. The next one over is the joystick. So you can move things around. And then this button at the end is a job trace. So if I were to select a job, so say this one here, if I click on this job trace, you will see the machine will actually trace out where the artwork boundary is, which is a really good feature to have. I'll be doing a more in-depth video on the fusion and the menus and all that stuff later. But for this video, with focusing on testing, you've kind of seen the aesthetic difference. So it looks a lot different. It has some different features. You may be asking yourself, you know, why would I upgrade? And honestly, if you're accomplishing what you need to do with the machine you have, I don't really suggest upgrading. It's more if you see value in what this machine brings over the old one. So with the camera, with the Wi-Fi, with the machine times, and all the other things that play into this. But I'm also going to link a document in the description below that gives a highlight of some of the differences from a tech spec perspective so that you can see the differences such as one has a camera, one doesn't, one has this machining speed, one has a different one. Uh, the Mini 24 top machining speed I think is 80 inches per second. The Fusion Edge top speed is 120 inches per second. Uh, that doesn't necessarily translate on every job, and I will show you that with the testing. 
Now that you've seen the aesthetics of the machine, so the outside, if you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to post your questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. Uh, I know that I'm kind of glossing over what they look like and how they function, but the main difference here is the Mini has just buttons to control everything. You have a lot of the same menus and things like that, a lot of the same options. It's just a major difference in the user interface. So one is a touchscreen pad that's more visual. One is buttons that you kind of have to know what you're doing or what they mean. So that's a huge difference. Uh, cameras are a huge difference. The safeguard as well as a linear encoder is a big difference. But with all of that in mind, does the Edge hold up to its speed claims and will it be better than the Mini 24? Let's find out. So first I'm gonna show you what the designs are. I'm not gonna show all of the machining because it took hours upon hours to complete the tests and it's just gonna be boring to watch that much. But I'll, I'll put in a few clips of the ones that I did film so you just see what it looks like. One big difference here is on the Mini 24, you have to run the job to figure out how long it's going to take. On the Fusion Edge, the software will predict it for you. That is a huge benefit to people working on client work where they need to know how long something's going to take for estimations and things like that. So that may be a reason in and of itself to upgrade or trade in your old machine. For me, it's a huge win. For other people, it may not be a big deal. But first, let's walk through the designs. I'll show you what those look like for each test, and then I'm going to cover all of the results for those tests. For this testing, I created my own file of designs. You can find this file in the link in the description below so that you can use this same testing on your machine. This file has four different layers. The first one is the small engraving test. The second one is the large engraving test, which is the full 12 inch by 24 inch bed. The third one is the small vector format test, which is six inches by six inches. And the last one is the large vector test, which takes up the full 12 inch by 24 inch bed. I'm going to send these files over to the laser one by one and machine each of them at the different speed settings to see what we get for the results. Now that you've seen some of the testing, I have all of the results written down here. I'm actually gonna put a graphic up on the screen of what the times were in a table. I'm not gonna read all of them, but I wanna give you a few highlights from that testing. So to start with, on the engraving test, I ran them at 400 DPI. I used a Stucky dithering pattern, which is an option on the Epilogue machines. I also ran them at 50% power for all of them and I ran them from the bottom up so that they engrave starting at the bottom and they transition up towards the top. If you want to run these same tests on your machine to see how your machine stacks up, there's a link in the description below to the file that I used of the exact sizes that I used for this. Keep in mind that in order to get an apples to apples comparison, you're going to have to run them at the same speed percentages. You're going to have to run them at the same DPIs, the same patterns if you can, as well as the same powers and everything else. Now the power really doesn't play into it, but just to be safe, it's best to make it consistent. 
So changing any of the speed percentages or the DPI will throw the times off and will not be an apples to apples comparison. But with that in mind, let's get into some of the engraving results. So on the small engraving test, I have the results here. Visually, they're going to look different because the machines are different wattages. One was a 60 watt and one was a 40 watt. So they aren't going to look the same, but the machines were run at the same percentage. So for the engraving test, I ran them at 100% speed, 75% speed, 50% speed, and 25% speed. I ran the same four speeds on both machines for both of the engraving tests. So for the small engraving test at 100% speed, the Mini 24 took one minute and 59 seconds. On the Fusion Edge, at 100% speed, it took two minutes and 17 seconds. So you're gonna sit there and be like, wait a minute, you just told me that the Fusion Edge has a faster motor and works quicker than the Mini 24, but yet the Mini 24 was quicker on this test. Yes, yes I am. And there's a reason for that. So I was surprised to see the Mini 24 came out on top, but there's also something that plays into this faster speed. So it takes longer or a longer distance for the full speed of those motors to kick in. So on these small tests that are only three inches by three inches, it's not going to show. You're not gonna get the full ramp up of speed. And I think that's why the Mini 24 beat the edge in this test. And actually on this small engraving test altogether, the edge only won on the 25% speed. So in this case, the Mini would have won out in most instances. Now for the large engraving test. So this one is a full 12 inch by 24 inch bed engraving. It goes the full distance. And this is where you start to see the difference. So at 100% speed, the same 400 DPI, the same 50% power, the same dithering pattern, the Mini 24 took 32 minutes and 30 seconds, and the Edge took 25 minutes and 17 seconds. So right there, you're seeing about a seven minute difference. That is pretty big when you're considering they ran at 100% speed for the full table. On the extreme end going the other way, at 25% speed, the large engraving test took one hour 48 minutes and 18 seconds on the Mini 24. And on the Fusion Edge, it took one hour, five minutes and 58 seconds. So it's about a 42 minute difference. So if you do a lot of full bed engraving or larger engraving, just by having this machine and running this machine, it's about 40% faster in this specific instance. So in a case like that, from a throughput standpoint, I'm going to have to give the edge, well, to the edge. Next, we have the small vector cutting test. So this one is actually about six inches tall by six inches wide. I will say that this was run out of cardstock. These settings were not balanced out for the differences in wattages. So the Mini 24 at 40 watts did pretty well with these settings or speeds and powers. The Fusion Edge, because it's a 60 watt, kind of blew right through the paper in a couple of the tests. So you'll see that the Mini 24 kind of has all those features pretty well intact. And the Fusion Edge makes them super thin and kind of blows some away. Again, the reason for that is this one was run at 60 watts. So the settings for this, instead of say 25% speed and 10% power or whatever it might have been, your power may only need to be, you know, five. It, so these were not necessarily the settings you should use. It was just a fair comparison of speed. So for the vector test, 
I didn't use the same speed settings as the engraving test because engraving at high speeds is fine. Cutting at high speeds is not a good idea. So typically you wanna keep your vector cutting to 20% speed or less because if you go too fast, it's going to make your edges look awful, regardless of what machine you're using. So for the vector cutting test, I did percentages of five, 10, 15, and 20. So I'm going to give you the results for 20 and five, and then I'm going to put the results for all of them up on the screen. So on the Mini 24, at 20% speed, which was the fastest speed I ran the test at, it took eight minutes and 25 seconds. For the Fusion Edge, it took eight minutes and 49 seconds. So it actually took longer on the edge with the smaller cut. At 5% speed on the Mini 24, it took 30 minutes and 54 seconds. And on the Fusion Edge, it took 21 minutes and 30 seconds. So you'll see right there that the difference in speed when you went from 20 to five flipped which machine did better. And then the last test I ran was a full bed vector test. I didn't try to cut all the way through the material. I just wanted to basically do a vector engraving. For the vector test, the speed settings are going to be changing. The power settings are going to be 10% and the frequency, if you have that lever, which in an RF2 blazer you will, which is basically the frequency or how often the laser is going to fire, is going to be set at 500. So with that in mind, so on the large vector tests, at 20% speed, the Mini 24 did it in 12 minutes and 48 seconds. On the Fusion Edge at 20% speed, it took nine minutes and nine seconds. So, it's about a three and a half minute difference or so, which on something like that, maybe isn't that huge of a difference like it was on the engraving test. Then on the 5% speed, the Mini 24 took 50 minutes and 26 seconds. The Fusion Edge took 33 minutes and 47 seconds. So right there, you're looking at maybe a 17 minute difference or so, which honestly is kind of amazing that it's that much different. So again, I'm gonna put all the results on the screen right now so that you can see what those were. And I'm also going to put a link in the description to the blog post where I have all of this information where you can look at it more in depth. Again, if you want to run these tests on your machine, make sure you use all of the same settings. Otherwise, it's going to be a skewed test. Now for what I think about the machines in general and whether or not you should upgrade to the Fusion Edge. So just like with anything technology wise, technology has come a long way in the last even like two years. The Mini 24 was originally released in 2005. So you're talking about 15 years since that machine has been replaced with the new Fusion Edge. So immediately you can see some of those differences with the addition of the iris camera, the touchscreen pad, the build itself, it looks more aesthetically pleasing. That wouldn't drive a purchase for me. It's more of the technology behind it. From a feature standpoint and everything else, I do love the Fusion Edge and what they've done with it. It's There's a couple of things like this drop down drawer on the mini that they had that was magnetic. I wish that was still in here. Uh, I think that was kind of a misstep. It's not necessarily a deal breaker. Uh, it's just one of those things where it's just kind of annoying to take screws out. And if you needed the engraving table, uh, that's no longer a thing. So that may be a downside to you. Honestly, I never use mine even when I had one, so it, it wasn't a loss to me. This machine will have a rotary attachment. The Mini 24 also had a rotary attachment that you could purchase for it. So those are still equivalent. So there are more things that could potentially go wrong on this machine. I mean, anytime you add 
a camera or anything like that. You're gonna have to keep up with the calibration and make sure it's staying calibrated and things like that. So that may be a downside if you don't want to just keep up with the maintenance. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal, honestly. I think you'll be able to kind of set it and then forget it. But overall, those are kind of the things that I've noticed so far. I've done a lot of engraving on this machine, probably about 60 hours in the last two weeks. And I haven't done a lot of cutting, but I've done some. And so far it's pretty comparable to the Mini 24. A few lines have been cleaner. I think with firmware updates and things of that nature, that's going to improve. Would I invest or upgrade to the Fusion Edge if I had a completely paid off Mini 24 and I was doing just well enough with what I had? Honestly, probably not. And the reason I say that is I just don't like taking on new payments. <laughs> but, but if you're somebody that can still get done what they're doing and you don't really have the capital to invest in your business, I honestly say keep the Mini 24 and keep rocking with it. And in the next couple years, as the Fusion Edge firmware updates and things come more along, uh, you may even find yourself wanting to upgrade to a bigger machine. So if you're not looking for a new machine and you're not really needing to upgrade the machine, the Mini 24 does a really good job. And actually the Mini 24 that I tested was my old machine that I had that I sold to my friend. The only reason I upgraded from the Mini 24 at that time was for a larger bed. But again, that's just my opinion. I don't like, it's kind of like a new car, right? Because if you don't need the new car and you have a fully paid off car, it's just kind of a nice to have a new one. Uh, that's not a reason for me to upgrade. Now, if you don't have a machine and you're looking at getting one or you need some of these new features to help your business succeed or manage throughput, then I would consider upgrading. So the price point on this machine is the exact same price point as the Mini 24 was. So if you're somebody that works with a lot of clients and needs to predict the amount of time it's going to take to do a job, you can do that on the edge. It saves a lot of guesswork and helps you do more accurate quotes when you're getting to that point. Both of the machines will engrave and cut just as well as each other. It's more a matter of speed. So if you're gonna be trying to pump out a lot of projects and you're trying to get a lot through the machine and it's the only machine you have and speed is king, I would consider upgrading, especially if you're doing large engraving as it cuts the time drastically. Now, if all you do is one off little tiny things, the speed difference wasn't that much, so it may not be worth it. There are a few upgrades on the new machine that I do like a lot. So being able to connect through Wi-Fi, but also have the ability to connect through ethernet, USB printer cable is a huge win to me because if my Wi-Fi is working well, I can send files wirelessly from inside if even if I wanted to. And if the Wi-Fi goes down, I still have the ability to print to it with an ethernet cable or the printer cable. Another thing I like is you can save jobs directly to the machine. So I've had jobs that have spanned three days and being able to save that job to the machine and the next morning just boot the machine up and run it right away without involving my computer at all was a really nice bonus. The camera system, I haven't done a lot with yet. I do see the potential for where it would work and be really nice, especially if you're doing custom products where you're engraving something somebody brings to you. It's a huge win to be able to place your artwork, especially when you're using scrap materials and trying to find that little square. So those are some of the main differences that I enjoy about the machine. There are also a lot of little things that can come into play that are really nice, in my opinion, over the Mini 24. One of those is how the autofocus works. I do like that. You can still manually focus this machine, uh, so it does have that. It also comes with a toolkit now for all of the different screws and things on the machine. So that's a nice upgrade as well. Having a magnetic vector table is nice on this new machine. If you have lightweight materials, you can hold them down with magnets, kind of like a clamp. So there are a lot of things that I do like about it. 
but whether or not I'd upgrade is honestly a complete personal preference and it depends on your situation. I don't suggest it for everyone. If you are looking for a new machine or you are looking at upgrading to a different machine, this is a great machine, at least in my experience. Keep in mind that it's not necessarily the cheapest machine you're gonna find. It is rather expensive in a way, but you're paying for those kind of features of speed and quality and reliability. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that will argue me on that when it comes to using different machines and that's fine. And that's perfectly okay because we all have different experiences with different manufacturers. Some of us have great experiences with one and bad it with another and the other person will have the exact opposite experience. And that's kind of to be expected with any type of product. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions about the machines, either one, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. I will also be trying to do a more in-depth video on the Fusion Edge by itself. If there are any videos you'd like to see me do with this machine, let me know that in the comments as well. I'm always looking for new ideas. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me and help me grow this channel to be able to do more content in the future. Be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share pictures and projects that I'm doing along the way. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch the video and I'll see you in the next one.